Hello friends, this lecture is on another kind of filtering that is homomorphic filtering or we can say homomorphic filters. Basically homomorphic filters is not exactly we can say is a type of filter but this is an approach to convert a non-linear kind of operation like multiplication, convolution into a linear kind of operation and we are calling it as generalized linear filtering or homomorphic filtering. So let's discuss about that. Now linear filter. Basically linear filters are designed to separate the signals which are added together. That is if you see the signal yt which is the combination of xt and eta t. Here xt is the actual signal and eta t is the noisy signal. Our motive is to extract or you can say filter out this actual signal that is xt and if we convert that into frequency domain because mainly we are applying the frequency domain filters so it will be y omega is equal to x omega plus eta omega now our motive is to extract this x omega and then convert that again into time domain so for that we can use linear filter which separates x omega and eta omega with the assumption that they have significant portion of the energies in different frequency bands. Now suppose the signal contains the product of two signals. Now in with uh, we can say instead of addition now we have the multiplication of two signals xt dot pt. If we apply frequency domain we can say that as we know the property of multiplication or convolution uh, in the frequency domain it is if we have multiplication in the time domain it will be convolution in the frequency domain. So here this star operator represents convolution. Now the question is how to separate these two signals because convolution is not a linear operation. And also we can say another way if the two signals are convolving together like xt is con convolution with pt results into yt. And again if we see in the frequency domain as we know that convolution is nothing but multiplication in the frequency domain. So problem is again how to separate these two signals. So for these signals that are combined we can say in a non-linear way the classical linear processing techniques are not so useful as the superposition property does not hold anymore. What is the superposition property? We will discuss in coming slides. Therefore, for this a special class of filters are developed for the processing of convolved or non-linearly related signals and they are called homomorphic filters. Now based on the characteristic that they use non-linearities we have the logarithmic function to transform the convolved or we can say non-linearly related signals to additive signals and then we can pass them to the linear filters. Afterwards the output of the filter is transformed by the inverse non-linearity operation. Now what is the pro property of superposition? We can say uh, if we check for additivity, two signals are adding together x1t and x2t and we are applying a kind of transform or kind of operator which is t. So that should be equal to if we first transform and then add the signals. So that should be equal. This is one property of superposition and other is multiplication. If you multiply a signal with a constant and you apply some kind of transform or you first apply the transform and then multiply with the constant both should be equal. It is a homogeneity means second property of superposition. So both the properties should follow then we can say it is a superposition operation. Now what is generalized principle of superposition? In that we have a kind of operator so we have to apply some kind of operator which is again if we want some like you can see one operator here or one operation here means two signals are combined with a operation which is shown as cross in the circle and then we are applying a transform. So that operation means that cross into circle should be converted into addition by some kind of property or some kind of function that is h in this for example logarithmic function we are applying to a multiplied signal and that it will produce a addition. We will see this example later on. And similarly it should follow the property of multiplication. So this we can take it as when we are converting one operation to other by applying some kind of function that is known as the generalized principle of 
superposition and it leads to the designing of a linear we can say generalized linear filtering or homomorphic filtering so now we will see the homomorphic systems for multiplied signals now consider the signal again yt is nothing but the product of two signals now what we are doing for this is first we are using a logarithmic operation because we want to convert this multiplication operation to addition and the best what we can apply is logarithmic transformation so if you apply logarithmic transformation we we know the logarithmic of a multiplication function is nothing but the logarithmic function and then addition of the two different signals provided we can say in this if xt and pt are not equal to 0 for all the values of t and we can keep this log xt as x cap t similarly log yt as y cap t and log pt as p cap t and if you apply the Fourier transform again that Fourier transform will follow the property of addition so it will give us y cap omega as x cap omega plus p cap omega now you can apply the linear filter it can be either low pass high pass depending upon the region which you want to extract it can be applied to extract x cap omega from y cap omega further inverse Fourier transform can be used to obtain the filtered signal in time domain because our actual signal was in time domain and because we have used a logarithmic function at the end we can use the exponential function to complete the reversal procedure if it is required you can see in terms of block diagram also it shows the operations which are involved in a multiplicative homomorphic filter and the symbol at the input or we can say output of each block indicates the operation that combines the signal component at the corresponding step you can see in, in at the input side we have multiplication and then we what we have used is we have used logarithmic transform to convert that into addition and then we have applied Fourier transform to just convert that into frequency domain to apply the linear filtering operation and then finally after linear filtering we can again convert back to in, uh, for inverse in time domain by using inverse Fourier transform and then because we have applied logarithmic function at the very beginning we have to use exponential transform to obtain the filtered signal now we can say another kind of signals which are combined through the convolution operation means you can say now yt is nothing but the convolution of xt and pt here again the star operator represents the convolution now again our goal is to convert this convolution operation into addition so first what we will do is we have to convert this convolution to multiplication and then we will convert that multiplication using logarithmic function into addition so first thing is we will take the frequency transform in this because we know convolution in time domain is nothing but the multiplication in frequency domain so you can see the question number 11 what we have done is we have converted that convolution into multiplication now what we will do is to convert this multiplication into addition you have to use the logarithmic function so taking the complex logarithmic function or transformation of y omega you will get log of x omega plus log of P, P omega because it was multiplication provided again that x omega and P omega should not be 0 for all values of omega now we can apply the linear filter to separate this transform components of x and P then inverse transformations can be applied to get the signal back in original domain you can see with the help of block diagram also at the input we have convolution operator and then we have applied Fourier transform to convert that convolution operation into multiplication and then we have applied logarithmic transform to convert that multiplication into addition now we again after converting that addition converting into addition we are can apply inverse Fourier transform because it is it is our choice whether we want to apply that filtering in time domain or frequency domain so what in this we are doing is we have again converting back, back into time domain to apply the linear filtering operation and then again we are converting into Fourier transform to apply the inverse of logarithmic function by using exponential function and then because now we have used Fourier transform we will again use inverse Fourier transform which will convert that multiplication into the convolution filtered signal so here also you can see the symbol at the input or output of each block it indicates the operation that combines the signal components at the corresponding 
step now you can say the path formed by the first three blocks basically what they do is they transform the convolution operation at the input to addition and then the set of last three blocks what they are doing is they are doing the reverse transformation that is converting back the addition to convolution and the filter in between therefore it deals with the transformed signals in which are uh, mainly combined by the simple addition operation so this is all in this lecture and for this also we have taken the reference as the rangaraj m rangayan book so thank you so much